Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Selenese Corporation, ticker symbol CE. So we're looking at Selenese today because this is one of the most popular businesses that we looked at in 2022. So it's about time to get an update on the company. Since we last looked at Selenese, the business's stock price has continued to decline. The business is down nearly 36% over the past year. However, not all hope is lost as Selenese is just one of two companies that Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway has been purchased thus far in each quarter of 2022. Based off their most recent SEC filings from their 13F, Berkshire Hathaway likely either from Ted Weschler or Todd Combs in all three of the first quarters of the year, and the business's stock price has continued to decline, so there's the potential opportunity to buy into a company that Berkshire is seemingly strong on, on a price that's well below what they were paying. We want to dig into Selenese's fundamentals today to understand why one of the managers at Berkshire Hathaway would be potentially interested in the business, and to discover what are we missing. What's the difference between one of these investment managers thoughts on the business versus what the market is thinking that's led to this down performance over the past year? So right now, Selenese is trading for $103.75 per share. Again, over the last year, their stock price is down nearly 36%. Over five years, Selenese stock price is down about 4.5%. Over 10 years, however, they're compounding at a rate of about 9% annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, over the last nearly 18 years, Selenese Corporation is compounding at a rate of about 11% annually. Keep in mind that their average dividend yield over this time would be in addition to this compounded annual return. So right now, Selenese is also paying out a 2.7% dividend yield, which is a yield that's much higher than the yield of an S&P 500 ETF at the moment. So Selenese is down more than $70 from their 52-week high. They're about $17 over their 52-week low. They're a large cap business. They have a market cap of about $11 billion. For more background about the business, Selenese is one of the world's largest producers of acetic acid and its downstream direct derivative chemicals, which are used in various end markets, including coatings and adhesives. The company also produces specialty polymers used in the automotive, electronics, medical, and consumer end markets, as well as cellulose derivatives used in cigarette filters. So Selenese Corporation was founded in 1918 and is headquartered in Irvine, Texas. For our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Selenese based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public, so it will continue to improve and get better over time. With that said, let's get right into today's analysis. So starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the past five years to be above. 14%. And there are two key reasons for this. The first is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. And the second is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. So by asking for a benchmark of 14% or higher here, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. So Selenies has seen their return on capital fluctuate somewhat over this period. As a chemical company, the business is more or less a commodity business. However, Selenies does have economies of scale and potentially possesses a low-cost producer advantage relative to some of their acetic acid producing peers. But given that they rely heavily on natural gas as one of their inputs and that they're producing a commoditized product, it's not surprised that they've seen their returns on capital swing over this period, especially as different commodity prices have swung as well. In 2021, the business earned about 20 2 percent returns on capital. Over the last 12 months, this has come down somewhat, and they're only earning about 10 percent returns on capital. However, averaged out over these past five fiscal years, Selenese is earning about a 15 percent average return on capital. So that's slightly above that 14 percent benchmark we were looking for. And those are returns on capital that are nearly double that of a typical business. So this is a check to start things off on metric number one. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the last five years. This metric is all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. We'll also be including their last 12 months worth of numbers in our calculations here. So over this time, Selenies has grown their revenues by about 56%. Their earnings are up nearly double, and their free cash flows are up at a rate of about two and a half times over the last five years alone. All all three of these numbers are up pretty strongly. This is strong signs of growth in their business, and this is another check coming in on metric number two. 
It's especially great to see that their free cash flows are up so strongly because free cash flow is really the lifeblood of any business and a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day discounted back by some reasonable interest rate is ultimately what that business is going to be worth. So a business can use its free cash flows to buy back shares, pay down debt, make acquisitions, reinvest back in the business, or pay dividends. So it's great to see that their free cash flows are up as well as the strong growth overall. Again, we have two checks to start off so far for selling these. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at selling on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years. We learned in our previous metric that their earnings have nearly doubled over this time. However, earnings are just the numerator in this earnings per share equation. So we also want to take a look at what the denominator, their shares outstanding have done over this period. So likely a good sign for existing shareholders in the business. Selenese has repurchased around 21% of their shares outstanding over this period. So this is great because when you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. So when a business buys back stock by decreasing the number of shares that they have outstanding. They're increasing your ownership percentage of the business, which is ultimately going to increase the percentage of the business's profits that you're entitled to. And they're doing this without you having to spend a dime. So it's almost as if the business is making a partial acquisition of itself. And so just like with any other acquisition, we want the company to be getting more value than the price that they're paying. In order to determine whether that's the case with more certainty, you're going to want to dive in and learn more about the business in more depth. However, this is likely good for existing shareholders as they're both earning above average returns on capital and the business has grown over this period as well. So this is strong earnings per share growth over this last five year period. And this is another check on metric number three. Then next up for metric number four, this is going to be very similar. So here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years. Again, we learned that their free cash flows are up nearly two and a half times over this period. And with buying back 21% of their shares outstanding, this is very strong free cash flow per share growth for Selenese. They've earned just about $12 worth of free cash flow per share over their last 12 months. So this is another check here on metric number four. And so far, we're starting things off very hot for Selenese. We are four for four through our first four metrics. Then next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business utilizes debt. So we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are going to be at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. So we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow that the business has produced over the past five years. So Selenies ended 2021 with about $3.7 billion worth of net debt. Since then, they paid this down, and right now they have about $2.9 billion worth of net debt, so just under $3 billion total. And over this last five-year period, Selenies has earned about $5.1 billion worth of free cash flow. So on a historical basis, they have more than enough free cash flow coming in over this time to be able to support this debt load, and it looks like the business is using a reasonable amount of leverage here. So this is a check on metric number five. Worth being aware of as well is that over their last 12 months, the business has earned about $1.3 billion worth of free cash flow. So that's slightly up from where they've been at averaged out over this period. And so on both an average and a historical basis, it looks like Selenese is able to comfortably support their current debt position. So far through our first five metrics, we are perfect on Selenese. Let's see if we can keep that rolling headed in to metric number six. So our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this would potentially give us a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury and potentially give us another reason to be interested in the business. So we're using their total enterprise value here because it's going to take into account both their market cap and their net debt position. And it's going to give us a picture of the economic reality of the business that's more similar to as if Selenese were a private company. So right now, Selenese has about a $14.4 billion total enterprise value. And we learned that over the last five years, Selenese has produced about $5.1 billion worth of free cash flow, meaning that in an average year, the company's producing about just over $1 billion worth of free cash flow. So when we divide their $1 billion of their average free cash flow by their $14.4 billion total enterprise value. That gives us about a 7.1% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the company. And so this would be above that 5% risk premium we're looking for. And this is slightly under double what the yield of the 10-year treasury is at right now. So on an average basis of their free cash flows, this is another check here on metric number six, and Selenies has done it. They are a perfect six for six on our select six analysis. Also worth being aware of, again, is that over their last 12 months, they've earned free cash flows that are slightly higher than where they've been at historically. Selenies has produced $1.3 billion worth of free cash flow over their last 12 months. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business, when we divide their $1.3 billion of their last 12 months of free cash flow by their $14.4 billion total enterprise value, that 
that gives us about a 9.1% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. So that again is even above where they've been at historically. That's almost twice as good as that 5% mark we're looking for. So Selenies does look like it's an interesting business to dig into and learn about in more depth, especially as the company performs so well on our analysis and because they're being consistently purchased by Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. So even though Selenies is six for six on our analysis, this doesn't mean that you're going to necessarily run out and go buy the business. This is not financial advice. And this analysis is meant to be a beginning and holistic understanding of the business. So even though these metrics are simple, when combined together, they can be very powerful. Then as a bonus here, we're taking a look at their dividend profile. So right now, Selenies is paying out about a 2.7% dividend yield, which is a yield that's well above that of an S&P 500 ETF. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends. So it's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a business like we're doing here and to look and see if their dividends are well supported by that business's ability to produce either earnings or free cash flows, depending on the type of business. For Selenies, we want their dividends to be supported by their free cash flows. So Selenies has grown their dividend payouts in all five of these previous fiscal years. They've also grown their cash flows cumulatively over this period. And in all five of these years, it looks like Selenies was bringing in more than enough free cash flow to be able to comfortably support their dividend payouts. And especially with such strong free cash flow growth over this time frame, it looks like Selenies will be able to comfortably support a growing dividend that's sustainable and healthy going forward into the future. Although please keep in mind that this is a snapshot based off their last five years of performance, and this is not necessarily a guarantee for what the future is going to look like, but it does look like Selenies is being pretty conservative with their dividend payout ratios, and they're bringing in quite a bit of free cash flow, especially more recently. Then everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Selenies, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair value for the business. So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs. So here, starting with an average of their free cash flows over their last five years and using historical growth assumptions based off the business's abilities to grow their free cash flows dating back all the way over the past 20 years. So going back till 2002. So these are historical growth assumptions that you need to do your own homework on to determine whether or not these are going to be potentially accurate and applicable going forward for the business to give us a baseline projected estimate for Selenies. So starting with their average free cash flows and using those historical growth assumptions, if we assume a growth stage over the next 10 years where they grow their average free cash flows at a rate of about three and a half percent annually, then assuming a terminal stage for the 10 years out after that, where that free cash flow growth is flat and they keep their free cash flows the same. If we add in their tangible book value and we were seeking a potential 10% rate of return from the business, then it looks like a fair value for Selenies is right around $135 per share. That would be quite a bit above where their current stock price is at, and it looks like there's a potential margin of safety in the company's current stock price based off of these assumptions. From today's valuations, it looks like you could reasonably expect about a 15% rate of return going forward for Selenies based off of these same historical growth assumptions. However, there are some caveats to both of these rates of return. One is that their dividend payouts would be included in this rate of return, so we would not be doubly counting their dividends here. So it looks like their stock price would be appreciating by about 12% annually over this period. Two, is that there are a number of reasons why this might not be potentially accurate for the business going forward. So that's why it's really worth your time to dig in and learn more about the business in more depth. And then please be mindful that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. So in just a minute, we'll talk about our wrap up for Selenies, but we have to address something first. What are the qualitative aspects of this business, especially those around the key points for a potential long or potential short thesis of the company? So starting with some of the key points around a potential long thesis for the business, number one, through acquisitions, Selenies will transform the engineered materials business into a premier specialty chemicals business that will create value for shareholders. Number two, Selenies should benefit from producing an increasing portion of its acetic acid in the United States to take advantage of low cost natural gas. And number three, Selenies built out its core acetic acid production facilities at a significantly lower capital cost per ton than its competitors, thanks to the scale of its facilities, which average average 1.8 million tons versus an average of only half a million tons for competitors. Then for some of the key points around a potential short thesis of the company, number one, the acquisitions made to expand the engineered materials business could destroy value for shareholders if synergies fail to materialize. Number two, the company's high margin acetate towel, which primarily produces materials used in cigarette filters, will see volume continue to fall in line with the decline in global cigarette sales. And number three, Selenies acetyl chain business will face long-term margin pressure from a more narrow spread between Brent oil and U.S. natural gas. 
Hopefully that offers a balanced perspective around some of the key aspects of a potential long and a potential short thesis for the company. Now it's time for our wrap up. So in summary, Selenese checks the box on six out of six of our metrics. They're a perfect select six stock. The company earns average returns on capital right around 15%, although their returns on capital are only coming in at about 10% over their last 12 months but that's still better than that of a typical business. The company has grown quite strongly over the last five years with growth in their earnings, their revenues, and their free cash flows. They've also repurchased 21% of their shares outstanding, so they've had strong per share metric growth as well. Then on both a current and a historical basis of their free cash flows, it looks like the company is utilizing a reasonable and appropriate amount of debt in their business, even with their recent acquisitions. Also using their average and current free cash flows compared to their enterprise value to get a yield, and then comparing that to the yield of the 10-year treasury, It looks like from both perspectives that that's giving us a potential risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury right now, and that Selenese is potentially attractive to look at and learn more about. Then looking at Selenese's dividend profile, it looks like the company's abilities to produce free cash flows lead it to support a healthy and sustainable above average market yielding dividend. So the company is paying out a 2.7% dividend, which is above the yield of that of an S&P 500 ETF currently. And finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Selenese. If you've done the work and you believe those historical growth assumptions, then it looks like from today's valuations, you could reasonably expect about a 15% rate of return going forward for the business. So again, there are reasons why that might not be potentially accurate in the future for the company. So it's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about Selenese. One resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about the business is Seeking Alpha. Checking out Seeking Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you probably know Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks. But over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. Premium has a number of different features where you can track, buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's algorithm. You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts for when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles, and you can take your rating experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. You can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make researching easier. And if that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 99 bucks. That's only 27 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but they are currently running a general offer for $119. But if you use my link, it's only 99 bucks. So check it out if you're interested. So as a value investor, you ultimately want to conduct this research as if you're going to own 100% of a company and you can truly understand the underlying essence of that business to understand what's important and what's not important for the company and what matters and what's not going to matter for the business going forward. So through this research, you'll learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of Selenese, and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a reasonably appropriate intrinsic value for the company will be. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Selenese Corporation, ticker symbol CE. Again, this was one of the most popular businesses that we looked at in 2022. And since then, the business has had a number of updates. We've also updated our analysis framework. And one of the investment managers at Berkshire Hathaway has continued adding to the position even as their stock price has continued to fall over the past year. So with seemingly strong fundamentals and a declining stock price, this could be an especially interesting business to dig into and learn more about. Also pointing out is that Tom Gaynor, who managed manages Markel Asset Management's portfolio. He's also added to the business recently. So that's another long-term value investor who has a small position in Selenese. So if you either learned something or you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about our update on Selenese with me, and have a great day.